happened today. Come on, you can do it. You can talk to me. I know you can. I saw all of the movies. Pastor Dave? What are you doing here? I know where the space junk from the Chinese, whatever it was, capsule landed. It landed in the prayer garden and it bailed out R2-D2. And he's a little banged up, but I know that's R2-D2. Are you sure? Well, kind of looks like him. It does kind of look like him. Except he lost his leg. Yeah, he sure did. But if you fell from outer space, you might lose your legs too. Well, this is true. And be a little banged up. Yeah, he's definitely banged up. But I've been trying everything. Right? Yeah, you know, I talk his language. You do? And he's not talking back to you? Well, I was wondering if maybe he only understood Chinese whistling. I Maybe. I don't know. I'm not sure if there's a special knack to it or what. I know this is him. I just... Well, maybe he's not. I, I'm not. No, I think he. No, I. Or are we sure? It's, are we just not sure that it's just junk? But see, I I was so sure it was him. I called all of the trustees, and we're gonna have R two D two Sunday, and he's gonna be the special guest. But I gotta get him to talk, and yeah. Well, that kind of sounds like a fun Sunday. Well, yeah, but. Nick hung up on me. Well, that, yeah, that's, that figures. I, mean, I just called up and said, hey, can you make R2-D2 talk? And he probably thought you were crazy. Well, he said something about what am I on. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, well, maybe I did make a mistake. Maybe you did, or maybe you can work on him. He's still not answering. He's I not even moving. I can't whistle in Chinese. Yeah, but he's not even moving now. Well, if you whack him around, he's going to move. But I don't know, Pastor Dave. I'm thinking, you know. You know, the hardest thing to do is when you do something. Well, I won't say stupid. But when you do something that you think is right. Yeah. And it turns out wrong. Mm -hmm. To admit you were wrong. I have a job for you. Okay. I need you to call the board. Okay. And tell them that Pastor Dave may have made a little error and that we might have to cancel R2-D2 Sunday. Okay. Are we going to change it to C-3PO Sunday? Watch your mouth. <laughs> well, okay, R2, let's go. Is he moving? Uh, he's going to fall off the table soon. <laughs> Maybe that'll shake him out. I mean, when you fall from space. Well, we'll send R2, D2, hither to, there who. Maybe he'll make friends with the coffee pot over there. Oh. <laughs> I wonder if it's a single coffee pot. It is a single oh, coffee pot. Oh, it is pot. a single coffee pot. And R2, D2 is single as far as I know. There you go. We'll have him... Check yeah. each other out. All right. Sounds okay. good. Wow. And I guess I have to call the board now, huh? Yeah. yeah I don't know what they're going to say. They're either going to say, Acox lost it, like Nick said. Uh -huh. Or they're going to say, boy, you guys are really scraping the bottom of the barrel. Or, or both. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. But anyway. People are like that. They do something, they think they have a great idea, they follow through on the idea, and when they find out it's not a good idea, they suddenly have such difficulty accepting the fact that what they did was not God's will. Mm -hmm. And that was the way it was. Abraham had so much trouble. Now, it only took me about... 13 minutes to figure out that that's not R2-D2, I think. Um, yeah, I don't think it is. But it took Abraham 13 years. That's a long time. Yeah. You see, remember last week, 
God hadn't talked to Abraham for 13 years. And Abraham thought, hey, I must be doing right. It's okay because, you know, I got my son, Ishmael, and everything's fine. And I'm 99, and Sarah is 89. And so this has got to be the way it, it was. But when God finally spoke, he made it absolutely clear that the heir he had spoken of 13 years previous to Abraham was not Ishmael, that the promised son was not yet born. And he also made it very clear in Genesis 17 that Sarah was going to be the mother of the inheritor of the covenant, not Hagar or not any other woman. Now think about how shocked Abraham must have been. For 13 years, he felt he was going in the right direction and on the right track, and everything appeared to be so logical and rational. Yeah, I guess I lost that with R2-D2. <laughs> anyway, God comes along and he says, Abraham, Ishmael's not the one. It's going to be Sarah and you. And in Genesis 17, 17, it says, Then Abram fell on his face and laughed and said in his heart, Will a child be born to a man a hundred years old? And will Sarah, who is 90 years old, give birth to a child? Now that verse seems a little puzzling because he's talking to the God of the universe and God tells him exactly where what it is. And Abraham fell on his face and laughed at God. I mean, why would he question God's power to give him and Sarah a son in his old age and all of the other things that God had done? Why would he cry out a couple verses earlier and say, Oh, that Ishmael might live before you. But the context of the passage seems to make it clear that this was a nervous laugh. You know, something happens and we don't know how to respond to it or we get news we don't know what to do with in our brain and we just kind of do the... Because <laughs> oh. we always say laughing is better than crying. But this was a laugh that reflected doubt and confusion. Abraham's reactions were those of a man who felt he was right and suddenly discovered that he was wrong. He was a man who had placed his total hope in Ishmael as the promised seed. And he had even come to love this unruly child in spite of his wild nature. So it was only logical for him to defend himself and his son at this moment and to question God about the event and to plead for Ishmael. Come on, God, he has to be the one. I have this thing all figured out. But we know that God's answer was a clear-cut no. So it was no wonder that Abraham was shocked. The statement sounded like a contradiction to him. Had not God told Agar he would bless Ishmael with many descendants? And was not Ishmael then the promised seed? Because they sounded a whole lot alike of things that God told Abraham that he told to Hagar. So you could see, though, why Abraham thought that the pattern that he was following seemed to be very logical. And he was confused. And consequently, then, he had a difficulty accepting the fact that he had made a serious error. To think that for 13 years he thought he was doing God's will, and all this time he was outside of God's will. And that had to be a rather devastating apparent experience. Man, did it humble Abraham. The good thing is that we serve a God of grace. And at this point, God's grace towards Abraham and Ishmael was abundantly clear in spite of Abraham's 
hard-headedness. And the Lord graciously told Abraham about Ishmael's future. Genesis 17, 20 says, As for Ishmael, I heard you. Behold, I will bless him and make him fruitful and multiply him exceedingly. And he shall father twelve princes, and I will make him a great nation. Think about it. For the first time in 13 years, Abraham was able to understand God's revelation to him as well as the one that he had given to Hagar. It now made sense. God was talking about two sons. The first one was Isaac. The second, Ishmael. The first was the true heir. The second was born according to the flesh. Sad to say, I believe that this stuff happens to 21st century Christians. You see, these kind of things happen in our life when we do not consult God's word. We go on our feelings or our emotions. It can also happen when we ignore the counsel of spiritually mature brothers and sisters in Christ. We think that we can go it alone, that we have the answer, that we're doing right. And it really happens when we get our egos involved and try to take matters into our own hand, even if we sincerely desire to do God's will. And when we make a decision without God's leading, believing we are right, we are in danger of attributing the outcome of future activities to our own right decisions. Like Abraham, we even misinterpret the word of God and we use it as uh, our weapon to support our prejudices and our biases to make it sound like we are doing God's will when actually we're just twisting the scripture to make it fit our will. And then when we suddenly discover we were wrong, even if it might be years later, we have such a hard time admitting the fact that we were wrong and accepting the fact that we were wrong and even sometimes getting on the right track because we just don't want to admit it. But we learn a very valuable lesson from Abraham's life. Though it was difficult for him to accept he immediately obeyed God and got back on the right path. And here's the thing. You can't undo the past. It's there. It happened. And you know what? Sometimes our past comes back to haunt us for years to come. But when we come to that point where we acknowledge the fact that we have been going off on our own and we repent and ask God's forgiveness, we need to obey, regardless of what we feel or what we think. And as we will see, God blessed him for his faithfulness and for his obedience. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for this day. Thank you that even when we mess up, you are a God who forgives. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And Lord, John goes on to say that if we say that we have no sin, we lie and do not the truth, and we make you a liar. Lord, our pride keeps us from admitting when we've done wrong, even when we think that we're doing right. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen.
You know, when I was praying, I thought Ardutitu was praying too. I know, that's what I thought. I was like, I think he's actually there he speaking. Goes again. I remember in one of the movies, I think, uh, what's his face? Luke Nightwalker? Skywalker. Skywalker <laughs> got a screwdriver and jammed it around. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because he was picking up space junk, too. Yes, exactly. I'll see you later. I'm going to get Mr. Millsap's screwdriver. screwdriver and see what we can do here. All right.